Good morning, my friends, and welcome to another issue of Midweek Encourager. I hope you're having a great day. Hope you grab your Bible with me and uh, open to Isaiah chapter 25 and verse number 8. We're going to actually read three verses today, um, but we'll start out in Isaiah 25, 8, and I'll try to give you a little bit of a heads up before we go to the next verses. We're going to complete the message today that we started last week on verses, uh, Bible verses to help us overcome our fear of death. Um, and so we'll look at the final three verses today. One of the greatest fears that we have as human beings is the fear of death. And all of us will someday, someday face death unless Jesus comes back and raptures us out of this world before we, before we actually have opportunity to die. And so God, God never intended for us to fear death. And he's given us verses after verses after verses on, uh, on, on confidence in him and trusting him and confidence in his salvation of our souls. And I, I really believe that uh, a lot of times what we, what we fear as the fear of death is more nearly the fear of leaving those behind whom we love. And yet we also have the confidence that God gives us in his word uh, that he will take care of them. And so we really don't have to worry uh, let's read Isaiah chapter 25 and verse, <clears throat> verse number 8, where uh, God says, He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away all tears from their faces, and he'll remove the disgrace from his people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. And so, God's given us this wonderful, wonderful verse where he will swallow up death forever, which literally means death will no longer be around. Uh, there, are, there are so many times, I, I, I have no clue how many funerals I've preached, how many funerals I've attended over all these years, but I've stood in cemeteries to say goodbye to a loved one, whether it was a, a, a personal loved one, uh, a family member, or whether it was a friend or a church leader or a church friend or a, a brother or sister in Christ. And it's hard. It is hard. It's, it's difficult because the human part of us is going to miss the human part of that person. We, we love the closeness that we share with family members. We love the closeness we share with friends. We love the closeness we share with our spouse. And so there's a, there's a normal, natural miss from the human standpoint. But we can rejoice when that person knows Christ and we're going to talk about that here in just a moment. But God says here in Isaiah 25, 8, he'll swallow up death forever. One day in heaven, there will be no more death. We'll never again have to say goodbye to anyone. Hearts have been broken multitudinous times as We've watched a loved one slip away in death, whether they were in a hospital or in their own bed at home, whether we've gone to an accident site and they have, they have died in, a, in, a, in an automobile accident or, 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 or other, other type of accident. And we've heard doctors say, all of us have heard the doctors say, We've done all we could, and there's no other hope. But you see, Jesus 
uh, experienced this as well. When his friend Lazarus died, Jesus and the disciples went to the home of, of Mary and Martha and Lazarus, uh, the brother and two sisters, and Mary blamed Jesus. She said in, in John eleven thirty two, 32, Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But Jesus had told his disciples before they got to the house, they, he said, this death is for the glory of God. And so we've, we've felt like blaming God at different times because of that human miss. But we have to be careful so that we don't blame God. God has your days numbered, as we've said so, so, so many times. God has your days numbered. Nothing you can do will extend those days. Nothing you can do will make those days shorter. You're gonna live and breathe until God says it's your time to come home. So it's, it's not a point that God has made a mistake. It's not a point that someone died too young. Now, too young for us, yes, absolutely. Too young in God's economy, never. Never, 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 never. God's timing is always perfect. It's just that we don't always understand God's timing. We don't have to understand his timing we have to trust God's heart. The day is coming when death will die. God will swallow up death. And you know, I'll bet you when God does that, heaven is gonna burst out in the mightiest cheer that we've ever heard. Bigger than any football game you've ever seen, been to or watched on TV, I bet there's going to be an amazing amount of cheering. While we finish this thought, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 13. All right? Uh, I believe there'll be great rejoicing in heaven when death is swallowed up and we realize for the final time, death is over. Death is gone. Death has been swallowed up. First Thessalonians chapter four and verse 13. Paul said, brothers, we don't want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or who, who die. We don't want you to grieve like the rest of people, or rest of lost men who have no hope. When we see when loved ones die, who didn't know Christ personally. We grieve differently than we grieve for those who did know Christ personally. And that's because when we know Jesus personally, we know that that person is, has actually just gone to sleep. And they, when they wake up, their very next breath will be looking Jesus in his face. What a great hope. What a great uh, confidence that we have because Jesus says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Now, granted, that's not true for when we lose a friend or a loved one who's lost, a friend or a loved one who doesn't have a personal relationship with Christ. Because we recognize if we have a personal relationship with Christ and they did not, number one, we'll never see them again. Number two, we'll never have another opportunity to share Christ with that, with that man or woman. And number three, it should spur us on to look for other friends, other family members who don't know Christ and make another effort, another effort, another effort 
to win them to Jesus. When we die, when we go to sleep, as Paul said here, when we die and we wake up, we are, it, it's going to be hard to believe what is right there in front of us. God, Jesus, and all of heaven, all of the people who've gone on before us, all of the family members that we've lost, all of the friends that we've lost, and we get to see them again. Um, turn to Philippians 4. 320, Philippians 320, uh, while I read this final verse, um, Paul said to the Colossians, he said, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so we have confidence, we have hope, we have a, a, a settled assurance that we will see Jesus. Then in Philippians 3.20, Paul says, Paul says, our citizenship is in heaven and we eagerly await our Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by, who, will, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to even to subject all things to himself. What, what, a, what a looking forward to we have that we will see Jesus, that he's gonna, he's gonna make, subject all things to himself. You see, we're just pilgrims here waiting until it's time for us to go to heaven. Have you ever had longings that didn't get satisfied? Yeah. <laughs> we all have longings that things that we wanted, things we wanted to do, things we wanted to see, places we wanted to uh, go. But you see, we weren't made for this world. We'll never finish our bucket list, right? Because we weren't made for this world. We were made for heaven. This world will never satisfy every longing that we have because we were made, we were created, we were saved so that our satisfaction would be in heaven, not here. When we get to heaven, we'll see how wonderful our heavenly Father is that he's provided a way for us to get there through the Lord Jesus. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. And we need to share that with other people because an awful lot of our friends, an awful lot of our family members, an awful lot of people that we're around believe they can work their way to heaven. They can get baptized and go to heaven. They can join a church and go to heaven. All of these different things that simply aren't true. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me, except through Jesus. One day, we will be home, and that thought brings comfort, not fear. <clears throat> there, was a, there was a man who lived in Wisconsin, uh, lived to be 120 years old. Uncle Johnson, as everyone called him, was a very respected man in his community. And, you know, perhaps part of, not all of, but part of his, uh, his advanced years could be credited to his cheerful outlook on life. It, that was just his character. He was cheerful. He was excited about living. He was excited about uh, today, he was excited about what he had done yesterday, and he was excited about what he was planning to do tomorrow. He was just cheerful, joyful. One day, he was working out in his garden, <clears throat> and he was singing songs of praise to God. His pastor walked past the fence and called to him over the fence and said, Uncle Johnson, you seem mighty happy today. 
And the old man turned around and looked at his pastor and he said, yes, sir. You know, I was just thinking. And pastor asked him, what were you thinking about? And Uncle Johnson said, I was just thinking that if the crumbs of joy that fall from the master's table in this world, if those crumbs are so good, what will the great loaf of glory be like when we get up there? I tell you, Pastor, there will be enough for everyone and some to spare when we get to heaven. <laughs> what a cheerful outlook. What a joyous life. You see, the only one who wants us to fear the enemy of death is the enemy of our souls. Satan's the only one who wants us to be afraid of death. God doesn't want us to be afraid. Jesus doesn't want us to be, the Holy Spirit doesn't want us to be afraid. But Satan knows that he can't go to heaven, so he wants to scare us about death. We have to remember that Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.7, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. What a blessing that God has given us this. So my brothers and sisters, we have no reason to fear death. It's coming to all of us unless the rapture occurs first. And God has said, don't worry. I'm in control. And when you die, you're coming to be with me for all eternity. And I'll take care of those who are left behind. May I pray for you? Oh, dear Father, I lift up everyone who's listening to this broadcast today. I pray that you would let them know the truth in your word. I pray that they will come to a place of understanding so that they will have the Son. God, we thank you that you love the world so much that you gave Jesus to die for us so that we could live eternally with you in heaven. Help us, dear Lord, when we get anxious. Help us when we get fearful. Help us when we begin to worry about death and dying. Help us to know that you are in control and you're taking care of us. Remind us that you are waiting to welcome us home. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hey, thanks for joining again today. I hope it's been a blessing to you. I hope that you'll share this with other folks and that uh, I hope I get to see you Sunday in church. I love you and I love being your pastor.